The final piece of the puzzle, the High Feynman Shangri-La Senior. It's often stated that music is the conduit to the soul. And if there was a clearer window to showcase this statement, the transparency of the High Feynman Shangri-La Senior would certainly be the way to do it. Hi, I'm Koji Sio. Welcome to Convince Me Audio. This is the Shang Senior Review from Hi Feynman. We need to talk. First and foremost, a very, very special thank you to Hi Feynman for sending us the Shang Senior 4 Review. It was an absolute pleasure meeting you guys at Munich. Hope to see you guys again very shortly. This is the unit itself. You pay $18,000 for the actual transducers themselves. The additional energizer from hi Feynman themselves is another 33K. But fortunately, you can buy these two parts of the same system separately. Let's take a quick look. This faux leather box is very much in reminiscent of the hi Feynman Sesvaras with this metal plating up here. Inlaid foam up top a book from Dr. Fang about the Shang Senior, and a cover. So this is the box itself. We can dispense with this. No accessories, very, very simple unboxing. These are the transducers themselves. It's very much in reminiscent of the Hi Feynman Sesvara and Hi Feynman Aria, organic now. The largest cups I've seen of any headphones, period. Beautiful leather and foam-like interior for absolute comfort. Same headband, suspension strap as the other headphones in the lineup. The grills are extremely open. This beautiful metal design. And the headphones themselves weigh 374 grams. It's like the hi and Aria without any magnets. Attached to the transducers is this fabric covered cable, six feet with the five pin connection for 550 and 650 volt bias. Obviously this is an electrostatic, you can't connect this to normal headphone amplifiers like you can do with the Sesvaras and dynamic headphones such as the Valkyria. The headphone cable itself is attached to the headphones. So if it was to break, unfortunately, it would have to go back to Hi Feynman. The headphones themselves rotate backwards and forwards 180 degrees with full articulation. These are the most comfortable headphones on the planet, period. Due to their weight, breathability, and seriously, how open they are. There is absolutely nothing between your eardrums and the elements. So, electrostatic. What is an electrostatic? Well, the topology of electrostatic is basically a film stretched over a pair of stators and then applied with the coating so that it can conduct voltage. And what hi Feynman have done here is use something groundbreaking. In fact, I don't believe there is a single electrostatic on the planet, including HE1 and Aperio, where the transducer itself is thinner than one micron, which is unbelievable. This characteristics definitely can be heard when we jump to the sound section and describe its capability. It's utterly massless, with superb tension in the Y and X axis. So, that's the Hi Feynman Shang Senior. Why don't we move over to the sound desk and see how these perform? Are they truly the world's best electrostatic system or are they one of the top three? Let's begin. Billy Eilish, lovely. If there was a headphone that was more transparent than these Hi Feynman Shang Senior, I don't think I've come across it in my 20 years of 
listening to high-end audio and in the last year of everything that we have heard at shows including the Aperio and the HE1. I think the Hi Feynman Shang Senior's innate characteristics is its technicality. The technicality of this headphone is absolutely insane. There is a caveat though. The Shang Senior, like the Hi Feynman Sesvaras, requires a tremendous chain and the right synergy. Unfortunately, you can't just put it on any old energizer. But to be honest with you, if you're reaching for a headphone like that, I don't think price or money is an issue. And for you, it's a searching game. The energizer world is a lot more limited than the headphone amplifier world, such as the Siegfried over there or the Bliss or the numerous other headphone amplifiers we have reviewed on the channel. Here, for this review, as we step into the sound characteristics of these headphones, we are using the Warwick Acoustics Energizer, but only its DAC and its Pre. And that is going into this Energizer here, the LTA Z10E. In this unit currently right now, we are using stock tubes. I have not started tube rolling on that unit yet. Connecting these two systems is double helix Chakron 3 interconnects. The setup right now for the Shang Senior sits at $45,000. Incidentally, the Energizer from Hi Feynman themselves is $33,000. I heard that unit at CanJam last year, and I'll be honest with you, this setup here, having heard the Shang Senior on numerous occasions on variety of equipment, has been the absolute best I've ever heard it. And I still think there's room for improvement. So that's the setup. Those are the headphones. Let's break down the sound characteristics. There is something fortunate and unfortunate about the sound characteristics of this headphone, the Shang Senior. This doesn't only apply to this one, it applies to the other two units in this category the HE1 Orpheus and the Warwick Acoustics Aperio you see behind the Shang Senior. That is, they step above the frequency response, where due to their innate characteristics, you find frequency response does not play a role as much as it does on lesser headphones, such as the 1266, the Sesvaras, etc. Where every element of the characteristics of the headphone seems to be separated. And I'll break this down like this. The Shang Senior, for a lack of a better term, is neutral with a subtle brightness. But this is almost like an Instagram photo, where the picturesque photo of the mountain and the waterfall has been taken with absolute care. But the filter that resides over it is a different part of the picture altogether. It's a separate element, and this is what's happening here too. The timbre, the technical performance of bass response, stage, layering, and imaging, and then the tonality, and then the frequency response. You can distinctly categorize each of these sections into its own sphere and separate them. Its technicality is off the charts. So, how do they sound? To give you a Rough reference, if you take the HD800S, sprinkle it with the RAL CA1A speed, so you've got the stage and the speed, and the vastness of a Hi Feynman HE1000 V2 Stealth, or a Meze Audio Elite, and then sprinkle in this entire process with a fistful of steroids. It is the most enormous sounding headphone I have ever come across. And that includes running the Sennheiser HD800S on LROG's KN HA300 Mark IIs and the Core Dave and M Scaler. It dwarfs the HD800S's stage. It is absolutely huge in width, in depth, and one special characteristics that very few other headphones portray, and that's height. 
it sounds like the panels are absolutely gigantic and look they are they are some of the biggest if not the biggest transducers i've ever seen in any headphone they look like a foot they're so huge so what does this characteristics this slightly neutral bright this lush mid-range this incredible spaciousness give you when you're listening to a song like the one we just did Billie Eilish lovely I heard this track on the HE1 using the DCS Lena in a perfect environment then straight onto Sesvara's on the DCS Bartok and Lena amplifier and their clock and obviously on the Aperio and finally on the Shang Senior here on this setup as you can see there seems to be a lack of a barrier between you and the sounds and that's the characteristics the other two headphones in this category HE1 and Aperio provide too and yet the speed of the drivers of Shang Senior is more detailed than both of those and the stage on the Shang Senior I think eats HE1 alive and Aperio can sit comfortably inside the stage and then have room for another Aperio. It's that enormous. The resolvability, detail retrieval of every nuance of sound is so apparent, nothing gets misplaced in the busiest of tracks. Even something as atrocious as metal in its production. Don't get me wrong, there are some incredible ones. Dream Theater, Alter Bridge, Liquid Tension Experiment, animals as leaders etc but due to the size of the stage for these genres it's a bit too big it feels overly stretched and yet it has the dynamics and capability to resolve every aspect of it but you can literally walk around in your mind's eye so for example the singers here the drums are behind her and the hi-hat is behind her over there in a row and yet between this that and the other there is like two meters of audio space in between them i have never seen such spaciousness in a stage from a headphone its imaging is absolutely spectacular every element of sound feels as though it's running on tracks they appear they don't come from the drivers they just appear and their innate inertia through the stage is never veiled it's the same distinct performance across the board the way i would describe it is a massive recital hall where every nuance of element against the background is highlighted timbre is excellent depending on source and equipment drums are highly realistic but large I think female vocals are, on this specific setup here, some of the most resolving I have ever heard. The way Billie Eilish layers her tracks, dozens upon dozens on top of each other, is never lost. Every one of those distinctly sits beside the other. It's kind of disturbing in a way, especially the way she does that ASMR sort of type of singing. Listening to that at midnight when it's dead silent because these headphones are so open below one micron thick drivers. The resolvability and speed is so apparent and its innate characteristics to reproduce the environment that the track was placed in by the studio or recorded has got to be heard to be believed genuinely. But it is an electrostatic performing headphone. It is not an electrostatic that sounds like a planar or an electrostatic that sounds like a dynamic headphone. These three headphones, Aperio, Shang and HE1, have their innate characteristics that is bound and specifically to themselves. They don't sound like headphones. They don't sound like speakers. They sound like what they are. If we were to break the headphones down into the elements that people like, which is sub-bass, mid-bass, etc., I think is a detriment to the headphones because there's so much more than that but let's do that so that you get an innate understanding of how the shang senior performs it's definitely not an all genre headphone 
But for live music and orchestra and films and gaming, there has never been one that is alike to it yet. It's the pinnacle of hi-fi at home performance that I have ever heard in the personal realm. Taking tracks from Monster Cat or Infected Mushroom, converting vegetarians back to the source, any of these artists or tracks do portray very nicely. So with that, its sub-bass performance is adequate, but it's definitely not designed for electronic music. Though you do get visceral impact, it does dig deep and is utterly bottomless good punch from the mid bass, fantastic support in the upper bass region to the treble region, but electronic music tends to be over separated all over the place so that there is just too much information, too wide and too deep. And this is fantastic for live performances. This is incredible for orchestras. This is incredible for acoustic to showcase and reflect the boundaries of stage but for tightly knit tracks, Nirvana, never mind, for example, it feels as though they are performing in the biggest arena in the world and it's just too simply too large. Yet the vocals can come right up to your face and all the way back. That's not the problem in that scenario. It's that the information is too widely forwarded to you. But what happens when you put the right track on the Shang Senior? It's not a headphone in that scenario. Listening to Hans Zimmer live in Prague, 2019, I think that one, I'm gonna link it down below. You are in the audience, you are in the arena, and you can pick out every nuance of every instrument on stage. Nothing gets lost. And then, funnily enough, on the right equipment, Shang Senior is never harsh. It can be a tiny bit spicy for genres like the rock, pop and stuff, but for classical music and live music, if it's recorded well, it's exceptional. It is one of three, Aperio, HE1 and Shang Senior. And if you want to know about Aperio, I highly recommend checking out the review card here or the Aperio versus HE1, which will follow somewhere here. I will do a shootout for you guys, HE1 versus Aperio versus Shang Senior. But as a quick breakdown, let's do a comparison. Stage. If HE1 is here, Aperio is here, Shang Senior is here. If height-wise, HE1 is here, I think its height was slightly better than Aperio. So Aperio would be here, Shang Senior would be all the way up here. Size. The Shang Senior is the largest, but it doesn't shrink the sound. So bear that in mind when it comes to classical Chinese drums, etc. It's absolutely gigantic, but it has a tendency to be able to isolate sound. So I was listening to a metal track where the track was mixed with just the right driver and the tiniest of sounds coming from as if it was coming from an old radio right here but everything else in the 350 degree radius around it was dead silent. It was the void. So it has the potential to resolve the right way superbly. You can use it for all genres, but most of the time, I think you require a nice companion headphone like the 1266 if you wanna to go to the EDM or metal, etc. This is for live music. This is for classical music. And it can do those other ones extremely well in such a way that no other headphone can reproduce it. But I think its strengths are in those two or three genres where it's untouchable. Conclusion. I think if you can afford the Shang Senior, you have one of three best systems in the world but you will be forever chasing the best setup for it because I'm sure it's got more and more to give. It's resolving, it's unbelievably good, and it sits firmly 
alongside the two other kings in this category, Orpheus and Epirio. Let me paint you a picture. Imagine you've been thrown out of a plane. You're blindfolded, your hands are tied behind your back. You're wearing earplugs, full sensory deprivation. You fall down a hole, keep falling, and then you land very softly. When you come to yourself and you take out the earplugs and the blindfold, it feels as though you genuinely can't tell where the boundaries of where you are ends. If you yell, your voice will fade into the distance. You walk and walk and walk and you never seem to come to the end of where you are. And then everything illuminates around you, all around you. And you are in an environment that feels as though it's like an airplane hangar. Cavernous, enormous, and yet it's not echoey. As a live band forms around you, you in this environment can walk up to every instrument, walk around every instrument, see the expression of the musician's face, walk behind the musician, go to the next musician, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And then you look back into the audience that have suddenly appeared and they seem to go on forever. It's the biggest staged headphone in the world. You will never miss anything. And if you are fortunate enough to own one of these and throw a game like Call of Duty on it, well, that's for the gaming review. And if you like reviews such as this, consider joining Patreon, where every part of your support goes towards running the channel. Funding our cameraman, Jamie, our editor, Rich, and our coordinator, Luan. I thank you for all the support over the last two and a half years for getting us to where we have landed today, where I can bring you reviews such as this. Until the next one, peace.